Hi everyone, welcome back to the D Hard House. My name is Alicia. I'm your host of this crafty podcast here on YouTube. Uh, please excuse my <laughs> me today. <laughs> um, I had my wisdom teeth removed over spring break and uh, I'm still not able to fully um, use my muscles and open my mouth. <laughs> um, smiling is also pretty tough. So, <laughs> um, so please bear with me. Um, I hope the sound quality is good um, so you can hear me. Uh, I am able to speak at least now, <laughs> uh, but I can't. Um, not back to 100% yet. So that's part of the reason uh, I haven't recorded an episode lately is because um, I had this uh, surgery scheduled and uh, it's taken a lot out of me. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> no. um, I'm filming in the backyard today. Um, I'm coming to you from our home in Washington State in the lovely Pacific Northwest of the United States. Um, it's uh, beginning of April. What's today? The, the 10th? I think it's the 10th of April. Uh, it's in the low 40 degrees Fahrenheit outside. So I have on a sweater and a hat and some knitted socks. Uh, and I'm, I feel quite nice. There's a slight breeze, making it a little chilly, but um, yeah, the grass is really growing. I mowed the lawn two weeks ago and the grass is out of control, needs to be mowed again. So things are growing here. Um, I'll give you a little tour of the garden in today's episode. I'll show you some things I've been transplanting out here. Marjorie is my co-host today, our black Labrador. Um, we're just going to hang out in the backyard for today's episode. I'm looking forward to filming outside um, a lot more as the weather continues to get nice. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're not out of the um, frost snow <laughs> situation yet. We saw on the news this morning there was snow, uh, a light dusting, but there was snow in the, um, the city where I work. Uh, or we commute to. Uh, we're not commuting right now during the pandemic. Um, I'm a, a math professor and uh, we're, we're teaching our classes online remotely. Uh, so no commute right now. Uh, although I do look forward to it, especially seeing everything in, in bloom, all the flowering trees. It's really nice. Um, but yeah, I have a lot of knitting to catch you guys up on. Um, well, I haven't been able to do much. Uh, I think I, I was down and out for like two or three days where I just, even just sitting up was uncomfortable <laughs> after my surgery. Uh, but other than that, uh, knitting has happened. So first of all, um, <laughs> Marjorie likes having conversations with the neighbor dogs. I don't know if you can hear her whining. Uh, but first of all, um, oh, let me tell you what I'm wearing. <laughs> I'm so out of practice. Uh, this is my, uh, one of my designs. This is my 11th place hat. Um, I think, was this my first pattern I posted? <laughs> uh, if it's not the first, it's one of the first few. Uh, 11th place hat, because I used to live on a street named 11th place. Um, and I'm wearing my um, So Faded sweater, patterned by Andrea Mowry, um, blacks and grays. And then the socks I'm wearing, I won't pan the camera down, but these are another one of my designs. Um, I think it's Trill, the Trill socks. Um, nice and comfy. Marjorie, you gotta chill out, hon. Oh, she dropped her ball in the bed of garlic and I should retrieve that. Hang on. Yeah, look at that. She dropped the ball in there right in the garlic. 
but I don't want her getting in here herself. Okay, let's just grab that, huh? There you go. She's like, oh cool, I figured out how to get you off your butt. <laughs> okay, I think we're back. So, dang it, she dropped her ball in there again. I'm not going and getting it. All right, <laughs> so last time I showed you guys, I, um, I finished my Raging River socks. I got two pairs here. And, um, and the pattern went up on April 1st, I believe. <laughs> no, it was end of March, end of March. Um, so thank you to everyone who purchased the pattern. Really appreciate it. Um, and yeah, it's just a um, pretty simple texture pattern with knits and pearls. Um, so this pair is for my husband. So these will get added to his sock drawer. Uh, and this pair is a gift um, for my sister. First pair of socks I've knit her, <laughs> knit for her. So uh, that'll be nice. So, yep, Raging River Socks, the pattern's available on Ravelry, uh, a D Hart House Designs pattern. Um, yeah so that's up and then uh oh yeah i was working on these socks before uh, and i did finish them i said i would <laughs> i said they were boring as i'll get out <laughs> and i finished them so um the yarn is patents croy in the turquoise jacquard colorway and i did use two balls um, there was such a small amount left over. Uh, so these are pretty much 100 gram socks. I feel like the balls were a little light because usually I don't use 100 grams of fingering weight yarn to make socks for my husband. So maybe that's why these balls were on clearance because they were a little short. And I didn't weigh them before casting on. Maybe I should make that a, a routine moving forward. But um, anyway, yeah, so it's just a two by two ribbing. I knit them from the cuff down because it's my favorite. I use a twisted German cast on. It's nice and stretchy and looks really clean. Um, and just, yeah, knit two purl two all the way down, all the way around the leg. I did a heel flap and gusset. That's my new favorite. Um, and then uh, continue the ribbing down the top of the foot. So uh, these will be nice socks to wear in uh, boots. Um, going hiking, the um, ribbing will keep the socks up and everything like that. Plus the Patton's Croy yarn is pretty, uh, pretty sturdy, pretty sturdy yarn. Uh, I'm noticing these socks last, last. <laughs> um, which uh, is really nice. You're getting, you're getting um, bang for your buck with Patton's Croy, uh, which is nice. So, yep, those are finished. And the sun is coming out. Gonna mess with all the lighting. <laughs> but it feels nice. Oh, man. After being stuck indoors for everything. Um... It's really nice to soak up some sunlight. So, um, I finished another pair of socks. Started and finished since the last time I've seen you. Um, when did, did I cast these on? Oh, I cast this on right before my surgery. So I did the hard part of casting on these socks. Uh, I knit them two at a time. So on one needle, two socks together, uh, side by side on there. So I had a little yarn management with the two balls of yarn. Uh, so I did the cast on in one round <laughs> uh, before my surgery. And then uh, probably a couple days after my surgery, I was trying to get myself to start sitting upright. Uh, we have a, a reclining chair 
and um, I was pretty much reclined out, almost flat. Because <laughs> um, uh, sitting up kind of gave me a headache, and I just, oh, it just did not feel good. So I was trying to like ease myself upward <laughs> to a sitting position, and having some knitting helps encourage me to do that so so I, I did work on this it was very slow at start like I think I did three rounds one day and then said I can't really do this anymore <laughs> but um, I did get through the whole pair uh, uh, of socks so this is some more Patton's Croy uh, this is uh, the colorway is singing the blues stripes uh, I've used this before and uh, the contrast heel is yarn, leftover yarn from uh, socks I'd knit a few years ago. Uh, this is from, oh my gosh, Yarn Cafe Creations. Yarn Cafe Creations. Um, this is pumpkin. I got a pumpkin mini to go with the um, full skein of, what was it, Ocean Mist? So I got the pumpkin to go with it for a contrast heel. And I even had enough left over to do two more contrast heels. And there's still more. <laughs> uh, so I bet I could get another set of contrast heels out of it, which is kind of funny. Um, but uh, yeah, I just thought the, the blue and orange looked really nice. Um, I knit myself socks out of this Patton's Quarry Sing in the Blue Stripes. Uh, and I put in a red heel. So I thought these socks are for my husband. I wanted them to look different. <laughs> uh, so I gave him orange heels instead of red. Uh, but yeah. So the pattern I used here, you can see it's mostly ribbing, but um, it's my Studmaster socks pattern. So let's see if I can catch the sunlight. Enough on these haven't been on the blockers long, just 24 hours. Uh, so. I still need some work, but uh, I don't know if you can see with the sunlight. But it's it's two by two ribbing down the front, and then you got these little faux cables on each side here framing it. Um, it just adds a little bit of interest, so it's not um, just ribbing or just knit stockinette. It's got a little something extra going on, which is fun. Um, so yeah, knit that whole pair during, um, recovery here <laughs> after my <laughs> tooth extractions. Um, yep, all finished. So those can go in his sock drawer as well. Look at this, he's going to get three pairs of new socks today. Amazing. <laughs> um, yeah. So, sock front, so uh, these, only two pair have been finished since I, I saw you last. Um, the other two were already finished, right? So, I'm not that prolific of a knitter. <laughs> and then, um, uh, the baby blanket. Oh, did I even show you guys this cast on? Oh my gosh, I don't think I did. Did I? Did I? I don't know. I'm just going to have to go back and watch my own channel. <laughs> um, so I'm almost finished with a baby blanket. Um, so I like to knit baby blankets uh, for, uh, for charity, to, to give away, charity or not. Um, I don't have plans to have children. Uh, and I think my sister is probably finished having children. <laughs> um, uh, if not, I've, I'm ready with all the things, but um, anyway, uh, and most of my colleagues are uh, not having children, so uh, anyway, I knit baby blankets, they're not for me to, to give away. Um, so I'm almost finished with this. So I posted on Instagram, I asked for some assistance in picking out some colors. Because it's hard to decide, you know, uh, and I got to see what Marjorie's barking about. I think it's someone walking their dog. Because she's running from one side of the house to the other. 
<laughs> anyway, so um, so I'm having a lot of fun knitting these baby blankets out of um, the Lion brand Mandala yarn and uh, cupcake. Uh, these self-striping, big self-striping colorways. So, um, so I wanted to come up with another um, baby blanket design that used two colors. Uh, so one color is the self-striping, um, and it's just one color repeat, right? It's not. <laughs> um, and then the other uh, color is the solid. So I asked for help on Instagram picking out the solid. And, uh, you, oh my God, unanimously, it was paired with the teal. So, uh, yeah. And honestly, the teal was the first color I picked out of my stash. And then, of course, um, you know, I see all the other colors. I'm like, well, maybe this and maybe that. And so, you know what? My instinct was the teal. That was the first one I picked out. That's what y'all picked out on Instagram. And thank you so much for... <laughs> for that it really helped and I think it looks really cool so um, so I'm doing this garter stitch edging it's it needs serious blocking here but uh it's got this garter stitch edging around um, the work here and just running the teal throughout with these um, pops in here and so I think it it looks really neat. Yeah, see, it needs uh needs some blocking here. Um, but I all I need to do is the last edge, and I was totally gonna do it. Like it's not hard, but I wanted to film myself picking up the stitches, um, so I could include that with the pattern. Um, so picking up the stitches on the the edge here to. Uh, to do the garter stitch because the garter stitch on the top and bottom are easy right because you cast on just do the garter and then at the end do the garter um, so but I want to film picking up the stitches on the side because uh, I know that's something I've struggled with and it's just nice to see what someone else does with that it's a uh, because it's hard to see the stitches um, from a different perspective and understand what's happening. At least for me, that's what I uh, used to struggle with and still sometimes do. Uh, so it is nice to be able to watch videos um, and, and see someone else's perspective. Um, I mean, wow, YouTube has revolutionized, <laughs> revolutionized our ability to share information and um, just create a, a huge pool of knowledge for us to consult when we need it it's it's amazing so um yeah so that's almost finished love it it was so fun to knit um and then <laughs> um i had to <laughs> i just had to um make something random so I kind of have a, a knitting bucket list and I'd like to include some more oh, what I call random knits so um, I, I knit a lot of socks I don't know if you can tell <laughs> um, I had hats and shawls and scarves and sweaters and all this stuff is great and then there's like some random like stuffies pillowcase cover things I, I don't knit all the time but are fun excuse me so I made um, a bunch of Easter eggs <laughs> um, and so, oh my gosh it was so much fun uh, so I put them in this uh, big what votive candle holder vase whatever you want to call it and um, and I stacked them up here so there's this middle and so I put some fake flowers in the middle and it just, anyway, I had it on the table for Easter. So uh, it took me a little bit to come up with the egg shape and they're all a little different because the gauge is a little different with color work or not. Anyway, 
So I knit a whole bunch of, let's pull these out of here, the solid baby blue. So I've got, I've got five of them. And see, I was debating between this kind of shape and this kind of shape. I settled on this one. I like this one better than this. But anyway, I got five solid blue. And it may, makes me think of Robin's eggs that are that pretty uh, teal turquoise color. It just makes me think of spring. And um, so I went with this for the solid. And then I wanted to play around with patterns, right? Because with Easter, you, you dye the eggs different colors and stripe them and color on them, all kinds of things. Um, so I made blue and gray stripes. But see, the blue and gray are so... <laughs> There's not a lot of contrast. It's kind of hard to see. So then I also did one with brown, brown and gray. Oh, I like it. And then um, I did uh, blue with gray speckles all over. I don't know if you can see that. Again, the blue and the gray are just so close uh, in color. Not a lot of contrast in there. Um, I mean, but it's one of those, like, you can see it close up in person, but from far away, you can't really. It's just kind of interesting. So that's the only one I did like that. And then um, I wanted to keep using the blue, so I was doing this color work pattern. And even in person, you can't really see it. Uh, so I did it with the brown, and it looks so much better. In fact, originally I tried it with... Uh, here we go with purple and it really stands out but I didn't want to do purple I wanted brown for my color scheme so I have this one uh, but it's kind of the random one in the lot and then a plain gray one and then I got bored <laughs> so let's see I have uh, one two three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. I have a dozen eggs. I have twelve eggs. <laughs> um, yeah, that was fun. So, um, <laughs> so I will probably next year, um, for Easter post, um, Egg pattern with the, the solid, the stripes, the color work here, probably some other stuff. Um, it was just really fun to play around with. <laughs> I like the random stuffies, little decorations, so I did that. Um, let's see. Oh, and then I cast on a new pattern last night. <laughs> a new sock pattern. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's not, <laughs> it's funny because I get this idea of what I want to do and then I cast on and I do something different, but I love it. It's generally what happens. Um, anyway, so I was having fun with two at a time socks, but um, I, I want to do a little bit of color work, but not like color work, like intense kind of selbu color work stuff that's gorgeous. Um, I wanted something a little more lazy. <laughs> that makes sense. So I cast on, um, so first of all, I picked out these two colors. I've been wanting to use this yarn for a while. Um, this is a yarn I got from a, a subscription that I, I don't think they do it anymore. Uh, yarn box um, but uh, yeah so this colorway is eggnog uh, as you can guess it was from like a December box and I can't remember the dyer's name I'll, I'll look up the tag uh, and make sure I put it in the information in the description box below uh, but yeah this is eggnog and uh, I've been really struggling like what to pair this with um, and I settled on this olive green I just, I love it. So, um, so, uh, yeah. So 
so that's what I have going is a little bit of color work here so we're playing with the the green and the gold if you will olive green and, and eggnog and uh, just playing with stripes I think it's fun so that's what we have going on and uh, I've got a little compass stitch marker on here that I made years ago if I can turn it the right way for you uh, it's gold so it matches goes with it um, you know just gotta bedazzle the knitting because it <laughs> <laughs> just makes it fun put some jewelry on it um, yeah so I'm having fun with this and look it kind of matches my hat kind of <laughs> and my fingernails uh, yeah so that's as far as I've gotten I cast this on last night and you know just have to start it just get my thought out onto um, the paper sometimes I sketch it out on paper first or uh, just start knitting in this case I just started knitting it <laughs> just bring it to life um, really fun so I'm working on that and then um, I guess the last bit of knitting I wanted to share with you is um, uh, my next pattern release <laughs> so um, this sock pattern has been in the works for like a year and a half two years something it's not that intense it's just that stuff has been happening um, so I knit this pattern like I said probably like two years ago and it's just been kind of sitting on the back burner because uh, um, holidays happened then the pandemic started um, I really lost my knitting mojo at that point um, and it's just been kind of sitting on the back burner for a while I pulled it back out of storage and knit it again to see if I could follow my own instructions <laughs> um, and so uh, I've showed you guys these socks before but uh, yeah so this pattern so here's my I, I've knit this three times now because uh, the third pair of socks actually um, I knit for my dad for for Christmas <laughs> and they've been shipped off um, so I've knit this pattern three times now technically and I think it's time it's time that I release this and stop hoarding it in my stash um, so it's all typed up I took the pictures took photographs um, and so it's it's going to be released um, I'm thinking next week next week so uh, let me just show you on this solid gray here so first of all the pattern is called these are my recreation socks um, and it's got this lacy cable running down the middle with ribbing alongside it so again i'm really digging um, socks with ribbing all the way down because they just fit the foot uh, nice and snugly uh, in it uh, so these I knit short uh, and then these I knit a little bit longer <laughs> uh, and the pair for my dad was the, the full the full length um, so you can customize that plus it has a little bit of ribbing in the back here along the leg not on the bottom of the foot <laughs> um, yeah so these are my uh, recreation socks and so you can see I've got it in this marled gray um, the pair for, I knit for my dad I'll put a picture in here I knit in solid white looks really good and a nice solid color here I've got a, a speckled uh, speckled almost variegated yarn and you can see the cable popping out there nicely so um, if I put it on the leg of the blocker here so it kind of stretches it out a bit more like if it's going to be on the foot so yeah you could really almost use any kind of yarn with this pattern 
Um, I have not tried self-striping yet. <laughs> uh, but we did the marled, the solid, and the speckle. And I think it looks really nice in either of those. So, yeah, this pattern is going to go up next week. Recreation socks. Um, so that'll be available on Ravelry. Um, yeah. Now the sun is going away and it's feeling a little bit chilly out here. <laughs> um, yeah, so I just want to say that I'm uh, aware of the changes that Ravelry has made. Uh, I did notice when I logged in, was it like a week or two ago, that it was that, uh, you know, there was only so much time you could continue using the old Ravelry layout, the classic Ravelry. So when I logged in, it automatically switched me over to the new interface, which I'm not a fan of. But also, you know, I get used to how a website is laid out, where to find everything, and then it just changes. And I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> I had already figured out where to find everything. <laughs> now I have to relearn all of that, which is, a, to, to me, annoying. Um, but beyond just being annoying, I'm aware of the um, accessibility issues with Ravelry. And uh, I am continuing to use it. Um, it is an amazing resource, um, huge database of uh, knitting, crochet, and um, uh, yarns, and weaving, and community, and uh, I mean it's just a, a, an awesome uh, platform out there for us to connect and share. Um, and I would hate to see that go away. Um, I really hope that they address the accessibility issues. So basically, I'm hanging in there <laughs> with the hopes that um, if they can continue to um, gain revenue, continue to pay their employees, right, um, and pay them to do the work of addressing the accessibility issues. Um, now, in my opinion, they should have been addressed before launching a new platform, a new format. I mean, when I say it out loud, to me, it seems like, duh, obvious. <laughs> but uh, I am not a website creator, computer programmer, like I don't know what goes into, the, what kind of work goes into that. So and I'm not going to pretend that I know that. Um, but I am going to acknowledge that um, I'm not living under a rock and that I'm aware of the issues and I am hopeful that they will be addressed. Um, yeah. That's, that's what I wanted to say about that, is that I'm hoping that by continuing to post my patterns on there, by continuing to help them um, generate some income, not that I do enough to help them really a lot, um, but that they'll uh, continue to stay in business, to continue to be a resource, uh, and just improve, right? So that's my thought behind that. Um, anyway, <laughs> so I have promised you a tour of the garden last time we're outside. So let me switch gears and give you a tour of the garden as of, let me look up the date officially, um, April 10th, 2021. Okay, first of all, here's Marjorie. Hello, Marjorie. She's adorable. <laughs> so, uh, first of all, let's see, can I do a big wide shot here? So this is the, uh, well, let's see, west side of the yard, panning back to the south side. We can see our firewood stash over to the east side. 
and then up here is the house on the north side of the backyard and all my knitting stuff on the table okay <laughs> so over here on the east side west side excuse me gosh i don't know which way i'm facing i need my compass stitch marker uh, so this was the first thing to go in the garden this is my bed of garlic this went in in late october right after we purchased this home yay um next to it i have plans for tomatoes and peppers to go in when they're ready over here we have carrots so i've put in what four rows now and you cannot see it on camera but there are tiny 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 little carrot starts there i don't know what to call them they're just now poking through so i'm kind of staggering this out so i planted this bit first a couple weeks later this bit here soon i'll plant some more I'm trying to stagger out so i don't have like 600 pounds of carrots all at once <laughs> um, kind of stagger them out this will be corn i think i'm gonna put corn in here and then uh, back here we got three rows of potatoes I planted 13 spuds back here. I had them sitting in the window for a couple weeks. Um, what do they call that? Chitting? Uh, growing the little sprouts. And then I put them in here. And I, I don't know. I don't know if they've popped up yet. I mean, I think, I think this right here is a tiny little potato sprout. I don't know if anything else has come up. Doesn't look like it. I keep coming out here and looking because I find it so fascinating. Uh, these are weeds. I did not plant them, <laughs> but they, they will come up at some point. Um, back here, I think, I think these are blueberries because of that tag on the ground <laughs> um, left here by the previous owner. So. Uh, we shall see. I'm hoping these are blueberries, because I love blueberries. Oh, here's our firewood pile. We actually went and gathered firewood. Um, well, at the beginning of spring break, so a couple weeks ago. And we did some shopping. And yeah, I'm excited about that. So now we're going to come over here to the other side of the yard. We're now heading east. Um, and so here, <laughs> Marjorie loves that corner back there. Um, here's the strawberries. I uh, transplanted these from our previous home, the home we were renting, um, had strawberries. And so I took some of the offshoots and transplanted them here. So I'm hoping that they just spread out. I'm just going to give them lots of room and just have a whole slew of strawberries here. And up here we've got, um, so here's where I've been doing a lot of the planting with the, the colder crops. So here we have broccoli. They're still very small. I'm not sure if I'm even going to get broccoli out of these. I mean, whatever. I'm I'm still figuring this out. So these are all broccoli. Um, these here, uh, clearly in a patch of compost with no no mulch on top. These are cabbage. I've got six cabbage here. I transplanted these a couple days ago. Um, I'm excited. Very helpful. Uh, the previous set of cabbage uh, did not make it. I put them out here when they were much smaller than this, and that was a mistake. So now I let the cabbage get bigger, and now we'll see how that goes. Um, I might find out that that still wasn't big enough. <laughs> um, these are a couple radishes that I transplanted, and then back here I planted radish seeds just right in the ground, and I hope they'll pop up when they're ready. Um, the things in pots here, I tried carrying over from our rental home. <laughs> uh, here we have uh, kale, which is super struggling. Cabbage, which maybe will take off. I mean, look at that thing. That's awesome. 
Uh, the other pot over there, I ripped everything out. It had radishes, and I think a slug came along and it had a buffet. So, yep, I got rid of those. Here we have kale, three little, tiny little things of kale. And again, I put them out here when they were really small, so I don't know. I'm learning, I'm learning you guys. Um, so that's kale. Here's lettuce. Oh, it's actually growing. Um, I'm excited to have lettuce. And then I have three beds of onions. So these are um, bunching onions, white onions. I'm gonna, I multi-sowed them so I can come out and harvest uh, green onions and then leave some to grow nice big bulbs. Um, walla Walla and red burgundy. And I got a few more red burgundy seedlings inside that'll come out here soon too. Um, compost bin, we moved over here closer to the house. And over here, I'm slowly putting down compost. Um, so this is where the squash will go. Um, like I said, we're not out of the frost snow danger zone yet, so they're not out yet. Um, but zucchini, winter squash, cucumber, cantaloupe. Um, I mean, it'll take up more space than that, right? But just adding more compost as I go. So we've got a row here. These are arugula. And then over here is spinach. This little C shape here. And so right in the middle, I'm gonna put one of my zucchini plants. And so hopefully when that grows, it'll give these guys some shade and maybe a little bit more growing time. I don't know, I'm trying it out. And over here we've got peas. Peas, I'm trying to train to grow up these uh, pieces of wood here as their um, trellis. And I put in some little lettuce plants. There's one, there's one looks half eaten. Um, here's one here. They're not all making it. I'm realizing I need to let them get a little bit bigger before I put them out here. Because I think some critters are coming along and chowing down. Not cool eating my food. And there's Marjorie in her natural habitat. So that's the tour of the garden. <laughs> April 10th, 2021, sun's coming back out. Oh, it feels so good. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm still figuring this stuff out. I'm still learning. Uh, it's fun. I think I figured out how to do garlic. <laughs> so at least there's that. Um, but we did buy this house in uh, late fall and uh, it wasn't really time for me to really have all the plants move with us. So, that's okay because from here forward uh, I won't have to worry about moving we're good thanks everyone for joining me today um, I look forward to seeing you outside in my backyard again in the near future uh, I hope you stay safe stay well and that you enjoy your craft whatever it may be or several crafts if you're like me Take care and I'll see you next time. Bye.